ไปจับไปจับเออจับแตกเลย A Lao grandfather who lost his left hand in 1964 to a UXO on exploded ordnance, pointing out injuries to his three grandsons from a UXO from the same war. Two of the fingers were cut off. The war may have ended here in Laos 40 plus years ago, but the casualties of war continue on places like this soccer field, where some kids just two weeks ago found a little bomblet. They thought it was a ball and took it home to play with a number of bombs. Despite official U.S. government denials and downplaying during the Vietnam War from 1964 to 73, the United States dropped more bombs per person on Laos than have been dropped on any country in the world in any war. The U.S. Defense Department estimates as much as two million tons of ordnance were dropped on Laos, much of it focused on the Ho Chi Minh Trail that paralleled the Vietnamese border. The North Vietnamese used the trail network to transport troops and supplies into South Vietnam, where American troops were fighting. It was part of the secret war conducted in Laos, which remained secret until one determined American aid worker made it public. There is a good deal of evidence to suggest that the United States has been carrying out the most protracted bombing of civilian targets in history. In Laos. Okay, no, no, that one. While working in Laos as an educational advisor in 1969, Fred Brantman was struck by the number of refugees fleeing the countryside into the capital, Vientiane, at the height of the secret war. I estimated at one point that I had interviewed over 2,000 Laotians. Every single one, every single one, without exception, said that his or her village had been destroyed by bombing. He also asked the refugees to draw pictures of the bombing, which he used in his testimony. So these were accounts of people who actually lived under the air war. Um, and at this point, nobody outside of Laos had known what was happening. Chanapa Kamvangsa is a Lao American who left Laos in 1979 with her family when she was seven and was raised in Virginia. She left her job at the Ford Foundation 12 years ago after she first saw the refugees' drawings to start a foundation of her own to deal with these dangerous legacies of the war. More than 20,000 people have been killed or maimed since the war's end. What I realized as I got older is that America left behind such a dark legacy here. I felt compelled to do what I can to help remove the millions of bombs that are still left over from the war. According to the Defense Department's estimates, 20 to 30 percent of the bombs dropped over Laos didn't go off as designed, whether it be for a technical malfunction or having fallen into a soft rice paddy. Either way, 25 percent of the country now is still contaminated by UXO. Since 1973, there have been four deaths here. This particular field um, is going to be used to, for agricultural purposes, to grow fruit trees. But he came across too many bombies, and so uh, he made a request uh, to UXO Lao to clear the land. The last two days that they've worked here, there have been 42 bombies found already. Bombies are the baseball size explosives packed by the hundreds into larger cluster bombs designed to open in midair, raining the smaller anti-personnel bombs filled with ball bearings and other shrapnel over wide swaths of land. The hardest to find and to remove safely, they have to be blown up where they are found. About 270 million were originally dropped of the cluster munitions, and an estimate of 80 million still remained on the land. Obviously, we still have a lot more to go, um, but for the villagers here, it's so important that their land gets cleared. UXO Lao is one of several ordnance removal operations that receive U.S. funding to find and safely remove UXOs throughout the country. I think one of the challenges to clearing the Ho Chi Minh Trail has just been, again, awareness and attention. There has been clearance over the last 15 years, but we just need more resources. Daniel Kloon, the U.S. ambassador to Laos, believes the improvement of UXO clearance protocols is one of the reasons the U.S. will be spending more on remediation efforts here. The substantial increase that the president has announced for UXO clearance 
in Laos from roughly $15 million a year to $30 million a year, a doubling is very significant. Have we ever paid reparations for the bombing that we conducted here? We have a responsibility to clear the unexploded ordnance that we left here during the war, and this is not to make a judgment one way or the other about uh, what happened here and who was at fault and who wasn't at fault. It's simply a question of young children being um, injured or killed as the result of ordinance that was dropped here in a war that happened 40 years ago. Well, I mean, President Obama being here is historic. It's the first U.S. president to, to visit here, um, and so we're I think it's, you know, elated uh, that he's going to uh, bring greater visibility uh, to this issue. And We're hardly done. You know, even the doubling is not going to solve this problem overnight. And it's going to take you know, the next um, administration and maybe even the next, the one after, to really address this issue. All agree that no amount of money, resources, or time could ever find every unexploded bomb in Laos. Ordnance from both world wars is still being found in Europe. The primary objective here is to make Laos safe by focusing UXO efforts on areas of known contamination in the more populated areas and educating Laos on what to look for and who to call when they find something. Emma Atkinson is the State Department's program manager for weapons removal in Southeast Asia. Right now, we've got about 85% of our funding that goes to survey and clearance activities, with the remainder 15% 15, 15 being split between survivors assistance and risk education. Chanifa's Washington-based Legacy of War Foundation, funded largely by other Lao Americans, helps the State Department identify the local needs and the mix of local and mostly international organizations working on them, from victims assistance to counseling and job training. I think uh, the Americans, you know, obviously knew a lot about Vietnam and Cambodia. Uh, some might have heard uh, about Laos, but I don't think they know about uh, the, the history of U.S. involvement here, and in particular about the secret war. I think very few are aware that millions of bombs are still maiming and killing Laotians today, and that's what we're really concerned about. To help raise public awareness back in the U.S., Elizabeth Suda started a local business making jewelry out of recycled metal from UXOs and downed aircraft. This right here is the original bangle. It's the very first piece that we worked with the artisans to make after the spoons. It's one of our best sellers, and we, um, we engrave on the inside or the outside, dropped and made in Laos, to tell the story. Named Article 22 after the UN's landmark human rights declaration, she and other designers and fashion models are selling the jewelry online, with a percentage of the production costs going to UXO clearing operations conducted by MAG, the Mines Advisory Group. Another group is using soccer to teach local kids how to identify UXOs, especially the small bombies, which can be easily confused with balls they can play with, as this third generation of UXO victims mistakenly did with tragic consequences. As long as uh, the U.S. continues to uh, remain committed um, by sustaining and increase its funding as needed, I think we'll be able to you know, address this issue, hopefully, uh, in our lifetime. For the PBS NewsHour, Mike Saray reporting from Xinquan Province, Laos.